Hi there everyone, this is Joe. welcome back to my channel. Now today I wanted to show you guys the video that I made, that I that, you know passed on to Square Enix to use for their E3 presentation. And to be honest with you, I really wanted to share this out because it was something that was a major deal to me. And it was so honouring to be kind of, you know, selected to do something like that. E3 is something I've watched for decades, since I was very, very young. And to have something adapted from my videos to be shown for something like that is crazy. So I'm not going to go on too much, you know, I just kind of want you guys to sit and chill out and watch it. It's all about how to play FFTCG and the reasons why I like it so much. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoy it and you'll see the differences between my version of the video and Square's version. So if you want to check out their version, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Description box below. There you go. And it's at 1 hour 48 minutes and 44 seconds if you want to see mine and then the break zone following me who are also content creators for FFTCG so don't forget to subscribe to them as well because they do a lot of good work and we just want to support each other and make a really good community out of this. So as I said I'll leave it for, the, for now and I'll be back in a moment after you've watched this video so I'll see you in a bit. Hi there everyone, my name is Joseph, and I'm here to talk to you guys about the Final Fantasy trading card game. I hope you're all having a really, really great time, and I just wanted to go over with you guys maybe an introduction to the game itself while going over some of the rules and the objectives of the game. And I also wanted to explain exactly why I enjoy the game as much as I do. Now for me personally, I've been playing the game and doing coverage for it on YouTube for over a year and a half now, which is since the game came out, and I wanted to share with you guys why I enjoy it as much as I do. You can find me at Josepha on YouTube, which is spelled just as my logo says here and if you want to kind of join me on having a little look at some of the cards how they work and how you you know beat your opponents down with your favorite characters from the Final Fantasy franchise then keep on watching as somebody who's been following the Final Fantasy franchise since I was about eight years old it's great to be able to see all of these cards come together and all the characters and it all kind of culminate from you know mainstays of the series like Final Fantasy 7 and all of the numbered entries into the franchise but it also the Final Fantasy TCG extends beyond that and brings together characters from even more kind of obscure references for the true die-hard Final Fantasy fans from you know such titles as Final Fantasy Tactics Advance or Mobius or Crystal Chronicles there's characters from literally all across the franchise within this game. So if you have a favourite character within the franchise, chances are it's probably in this game. Now, to go over the basic rules of the game, the objective is to beat your opponent with various different forwards, which is referring to, you know, characters that can deal damage to your opponent. And you need to deal seven damage to your opponent in total in order to win the game. So how do you go about doing that? Well, there are four different types of cards within the Final Fantasy TCG. You have forwards, backups, summons and as of opus 4 monsters all of the sets names after all the sets are named opuses ranging from opus 1 2 3 4 5 and the upcoming opus 6 which will be released very very shortly then you have various different ways to deal damage to your opponents and keep control of the field in such a way that it allows you to win the game now, as I've already said, there are four different card types, which are forwards, monsters, summons, and backups. Now, all cards have one thing in common, and that is a cost to play them. And you will look in the top left corner of any card, there will be a numerical number, and then the color of the card as well. There are eight elements within Final Fantasy TCG, which are fire, ice, water, wind, earth, lightning, light, and dark. Now, light and dark are slightly special when considered against the rest of them, because they can be paid for in with any color, although you can only ever have one light light or dark card out at any given time. Now the way that you generate the ability to be able to play these cards is through CP or crystal points. Now there are two ways to generate CP, one of which is to use backups which we'll get to shortly and the second of which is to discard a card from your hand. You draw two cards in, in every turn in this game as opposed to the one that you would normally draw in any other game but the reason for that is because the resource management in this game is slightly different. By discarding a card from your hand you generate two CP of the colour of the card you discarded. Now you only need one of those CP to match the colour of the card you're trying to play which opens up a great number of possibilities for you to play multicoloured decks. But you have to, say you were to discard a fire card to generate two fire CP, those two CP can be put towards any other card that you wanted to play. For example, if you wanted to play a four CP card that is fire, such as Tifa, you would need to generate at least four CP to play it, at least one of which needs to be fire. 
Now, going into forwards now, we're going to talk about how those work. Now, forwards are your primary method of dealing damage to your opponent and from stopping your opponent from dealing damage to you. Forwards always have a power rating in the bottom right-hand corner of the card, and that ranges from anywhere from 1,000 for sort of smaller forwards all the way up to 10,000 so far, and there's room for you know future sets for the cards to get bigger even than that. And that is your way of kind of comparing how powerful your forward is against your opponent. So we'll get to combat shortly and but forwards are your primary way of dealing damage to your opponent and vice versa and to stop your opponent from dealing damage to you now backups are usually cards that are kind of supporting roles and when you play a backup it is treated as a card that does it has passive effects or activated effects and you can use those to then generate CP for your further cards that you're wanting to play like I said earlier there are two ways to generate CP one of them is to discard cards from your hand the other is to dull one of your backups which is to turn it sideways ways and that generates one CP of the colour of the card that you're dulling. And this means that as you you know, pick up backups to play onto your board, usually by discarding cards to pay for them, it then kind of alleviates the need to discard cards in your hand to pay for further things later in the game. So it allows you to play bigger things more frequently. You can have a maximum of five backups in your in, within your backup zone, and this means that making room for important abilities that you want to play, whether they be passive abilities or abilities you want to be able to use on, you know, on occasion, is very, very important in making the choices between which backups you're choosing to play. Now, monsters are slightly different and are newer to the game than the other three card types, having been introduced in the fourth set of the game named Opus 4. Now, monsters work slightly differently. They are similar to backups in that you play them and they don't necessarily do something straight away when they come into play. They, they are kind of just sort of sitting in the sidelines playing a supporting role, but they can't be dulled for CP like backups can, so they can't be used to pay for other cards. What they can do, however, so they fulfill different roles. Some monsters can turn into forwards, and therefore sort of, you know, be treated as an attacker or a defender to try and progress the new stage of the game. Others have abilities that can remove other cards from, from play, things like Dragon, which is used to generally remove forwards off the field. Or you can get cards like Schrodinger, which was introduced in Opus 5, which do have an ability when they come into play, but this one is kind of special because it's a randomised effect depending on what you have on the top of your deck. And then the last card type is slightly different from the other three, because all of the other three card types have something in common in that they're treated as characters. Because when, they all play, when you play a character, it stays on the board. Summons, on the other hand, are slightly different. They can be played at any time, and in response to something you or your opponent is doing at that any given time, they activate their ability no matter what it is. For example, we'll use Odin here, in, who can remove any forward that costs four or less from the board, breaking it or putting it into the break zone, essentially destroying the character. And you go straight into your break zone, and it is a one-time use thing, and it does its job, and it leaves. Both summons and monsters are very, very important to any deck because they can be used to progress the game without necessarily dealing damage to your opponent. Keeping an advantage over your opponent is one of the most important things in any card game, particularly this one. Okay, so now we know how to play a card within Final Fantasy TCG, but what are the cards actually useful for? So if we go over how turns work, the first thing that you will do in a turn is activate all of your cards. Activate means turn any cards that you have dulled or turn sideways to use their effects or attack with back up so that they're ready to be used for the turn. Then you have your draw phase, where you will draw two cards from your 50 card deck, and then you have a main phase in which you can play any cards or abilities during your turn that you want to activate before you going into an attack phase. Now when you go through your attack phase, you can attack with any of your forwards that you currently have out, you know, one, one at a time in order to try to deal damage to your opponent. There is also an advanced mechanic called party attacking, which is obviously a throwback to most things in Final Fantasy where we always have a party, but that's something we can get to later. But attacking with your forwards gives your opponent an opportunity to block with one of their own forwards. So let's say that I have a Steiner out because I'm a massive Final Fantasy IX nut, so I'm going to use Steiner as an example, and your opponent has a Tifa out. My Steiner has 6,000 power, and my opponent's Tifa has 4,000. If my opponent chooses to block with Tifa, her 4,000 power is not big enough to counter my 6,000 power Steiner. So therefore, the Tifa would be broken and put into the break zone. Basically, your power number in the bottom right-hand corner also serves as your health. So if enough damage is dealt to your forward to break that threshold, then that would be enough to break the forward and put it into the break zone. If your opponent chooses not to block your forward and not to lose their guy, then they can take a point of damage. And taking a point of damage comes off the top of your deck into your damage zone. If 
You may have seen certain cars that have an EX Burst logo on them. Steiner is a great example of this. If an EX Burst card is put into your damage zone, you would get the ability that you would have gotten by playing the card as well. So therefore, playing EX Bursts can actually turn your damage that you would be taking in, you know, into an advantage, which allows you to then kind of swing the game back in your favour. It's very reminiscent of like EX Bursts or Limit Bursts or things like that, where in Final Fantasy, the more damage you're taking, the more dangerous you become. And the same is very, very true of this game. And then finally, you have a main phase two, where after you've attacked, you can then choose to play other cards or continue to play abilities and things like that during your turn. And an end phase, where you then pass the abilities to your opponent, the ability to play to your opponent. So why would you want to play FFTCG? Well, from a personal standpoint, as I said previously, the level of detail and celebration for the Final Fantasy franchise is a massive draw for me. There's such a huge range of characters that you can love and get to know and play, even characters you've never necessarily heard of. I mean, there are characters that I've played that I didn't know about as well as I'd like until I haven't played the game and then gone and researched them later. Characters like Mira from Crystal Chronicles is a character I didn't know very well previously, but now I love the character. She's great in the card game and she's a really cool character in general. But there's just so much variety and things that you can do to cater to your own playstyle, and it can be whether you love the flavour of the franchise. If you love FF7, there's a starter deck for that, and there's a ton of different Final Fantasy 7 cards. If you're a fan of Final Fantasy 13, there's actually two starter decks for that one. You know, FF14, FF2, even. You know, there's so much variety where you can pick and choose what you want to play, and that's a really, really big thing for me. The resource management of the game is something I also really, really enjoy. It's something that you have to kind of think very carefully about, and the strategy not only comes in how you build your deck, but how you pick and choose when and what to play at any given time. And that's a really, really fun factor for this game. And then even if you go into the top competitive levels of the game, no two decks ever look the same. It's very, very well balanced. Like, there's a lot of really, really strong cards, but it's very, very rare that anything ever becomes kind of top tier even. I hate to use the word tier, but it's like there's such a wide variety of good cards that you're pretty much never going to go wrong. It's very, very accessible. It's very, very easy to pick up. And it's one of those beautiful games that has that ability where it's easy to learn, but it's difficult to master. And that's one of my favorite things about this game. There's a lot to really love about this. If you love Final Fantasy and you love the franchise as much as I do, then definitely try this game out because it's a fantastic celebration of the franchise. If you guys need any further information about the game, then by all means check out Square Enix's Final Fantasy Trading Card Game website. Or if you want to, if you're picking up some of the Star Decks and you want to learn a little bit more about what to do with them, then you're more than welcome to check out my YouTube channel, which is Josepha, as you can see by the logo I've just put down again. And I will take you through kind of the easiest ways to get into the game as an easy a way as possible. And there are plenty of other resources around. There are Facebook groups, there are Discord groups, there are um, you know plenty of other YouTube channels that you can check out. Out, but there's tons of resources out there to get you into the game so if you want to try this out then by all means anyways thank you very very much for watching i hope you really really enjoy this and i really hope that you get into the game and you can come and check it out and come and enjoy the game with me and the rest of the guys who play it now here's another group of guys who would love the final fantasy training card game just as much as i do and they're the break zone and they're going to be here to talk to you about various different events and ways to play the game with new people all, over, all across north america so thank you very much for joining me and i'll hope to speak to you guys soon thanks very much see you later bye so yeah that's pretty much how it all went down and as you can see it doesn't take long for my appearance to change uh, you know anyone who's followed my channel for a long time knows that my hair color changes my face structure changes like i have a beard right now and i've never really done that before and you know it's just one of those things that i like presenting myself as, as somebody who's a bit of a chameleon and someone who changes quite a lot but yeah so my version is slightly different for theirs so as i said before if you wanted to check that out then check out the link in the descript description box below one of these days i'll get that phrase out correct but that's it for this video so thank you very much for watching and for all of you that are supporting me on my patreon page then thank you very much if you'd like to check that out then I'll leave a link to that in the description box as well if you have any ideas for videos that you'd like me to do or whether it be about FFTCG or something completely different then please leave a comment below if you wanted to you know have a little look and talk about sort of the video that you've just seen then you're welcome to comment on that too I actually checked out the twitch chat while this was being played because I was a little nervous that everyone was gonna read me to filth and 
and they actually did it and everyone was really positive about it. So that was really, really encouraging. So anyone that's been supporting this channel so far, thank you very, very much. And hopefully I'll get to see you guys soon. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Never forget to do that. Thank you again. See you later. Bye.